Hi friends, welcome back to Common the Chaos Homeschool. So today I'm very excited to introduce to you my latest curriculum guide. It is a literature-based approach to earth science. Now this is either a one semester course or you could spread it out through the whole year. There are 89 days planned out. I have some spine curriculum, I have some add-ons, I have hands-on activities, and I have YouTube videos all scheduled in. This curriculum is intended for the upper elementary ages up through middle school, so like fifth, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. I created this guide because I couldn't find anything like this, and I really wanted to use this approach to teach science to my kids. So I went ahead and created this for myself, and I polished it off so I can offer it to all of you. Now, if you do like the look of this after I've shown you what's inside, but you would prefer an astronomy unit, I did create an astronomy unit about a year ago, and so I will link the video for that astronomy unit below if you'd like to check that out. But today I'm talking about Discovering Earth's Wonders. This is a journey through geology and meteorology. Now, I do have plans to create more of an ecology and conservation guide after this. Uh, we'll see if I get to that, but that is sort of my plans. So it's kind of going to become a three-part series, hopefully, eventually. So in this video, I'm going to give you a close-up look at this guide and just talk about what is in it. I'm going to show you a lot of the books that I have scheduled in this guide and just sort of explain how I use this in my own homeschool. Okay, so let's take a look inside of Discovering Earth's Wonders Guide. So here you can see the table of contents. We have an introduction section, I have a book list section, and then I have the daily reading and activity guide. We cover introduction to earth science, the earth moon system, earth within the universe, layers of the earth, plate tectonics, earthquakes, volcanoes, rocks and minerals, weathering and erosion, fossils, cycles in nature, the water cycle, water on land, oceans and seas, Earth's atmosphere, climate, seasons and effects, weather patterns, severe weather, other natural disasters, and climate change. So over here, I have an introduction to this course. It's just basically saying what we will cover in the course, what we just saw in the table of contents. Over here, I talk about how to use this guide. I do mention that most of the resources used are secular. So most of the books that you will see when I show you the books, they are secular. I will mention if they are Christian books. I have included some Christian resources. Those are optional. They are not necessary for this course. But if you are a Christian like myself and you want to add in a Christian worldview, you will probably want to add in these resources. So I have these spine resources, and I will talk about those in a minute. I have some Christian resources, and then I have a bunch of additional fiction and nonfiction books that are scheduled throughout the guide. And these are optional. You can add as much or as little of these as you would like. I have some hands-on activities and experiments that are in the guide, also optional. If you're like us, we don't love a ton of activities. And so we don't really do that a whole lot, but I do try to get to like one a week personally in my own homeschool. We have a narration journal. I'm going to show you that when I show you the books. I do have a link to some narration journals that I have created that are on Amazon. There are YouTube videos included. There are some additional videos included. These are longer videos or maybe videos that you might want to pre-watch for more sensitive students. And then I talk about making sure that you store your digital copy in a safe place because this is a digital guide. I have ways to contact me here. Okay, so the next few pages are book lists. So I have the spine resource books, which I will show you after this here. So we have some spine resources. We have optional Christian resources. I have my hands-on activities and experiment resources narration notebook, and then all the additional nonfiction and fiction resources. And I do have links to all of these resources here. 
I do want to mention right now that I do have a free sample that has all of this information. You will get the first, um, well, up to this, the first 31 pages of this guide for free. So you can check below for the first 31 pages of this guide. So you can take a look at the book list, you can click on the links to see the books, and you can get an idea of the first two weeks and what they are like. All right, so more of the fiction, nonfiction books here. And then I have a list of additional super cool but unscheduled resources. So I have a bunch of other books that I just thought were really beautiful, but I did not schedule them into this guide. So about 10 of those. Here's the beginning of the daily reading and activity guide. So this is what a week looks like. This is week one, so it's a little bit shorter, but just to have an idea, we have our topics here. So our first three days, we are doing introduction to earth science, and then we are moving into earth and moon system. So I will say how many pages to read. So I have two pages in the DK geography book. We have one page in planet earth. We have, chapters one to two in exploring planet earth so that's a very short chapter i believe that's why i have two pages to read this week and then we have johan kepler this is a christian resource the rest of the fiction and nonfiction add-ons are not so i did note that here so reading chapter one of that if you want a living book that talks about a scientist that has to do with discovering things when it comes to earth science I have Journey to the Center of the Earth. There's one book that is not a graphic novel, and then it says there's the, the graphic novel is scheduled the next week. So if you want to do the real book, it's here. I have a check mark for narration journal, so that your child can check off the narration journal once they've done it. I've left space here for notes if you want to write any notes to your child or to yourself. And then over here, I have videos that go along with day one. So day two, I have two books scheduled here. So about six pages here. We have a lab from one of the lab books scheduled, a chapter to read here, a, a few chapters here. These are short chapters, a check for the narration journal and a video here. So what I do personally, I currently have a student going through this on her own and I print off these guide pages I'll X out anything I don't want her to do. So I didn't have her do the journey to the center of the earth. I wanted her to do the graphic novel version. So I crossed that off and she just goes through and checks it off as she goes. When she's done her narration journal, she checks off there. She watches the videos on her own and she just goes through this herself. She can be very independent. I will also be doing this with my two boys, which will probably be doing this together. Now I do wanna stress that the spines are pretty important, but everything under that is optional. And even this spine here, I talk about how that one is also sort of optional because I don't have a lot of those pages scheduled out in this guide. I do plan on using it heavily in the next guide that I plan on creating. So that's week one. Here's a look at week two, it gets a little bit longer. I do suggest you don't try to do everything but we have some reading here for the spine. We have this, if you want a Christian resource, so four days to complete that chapter. We have Johannes Kepler, chapter five, Journey to the Center of the Earth. This is the book, and then this is the graphic novel that can be done in three days. And then we have some videos. So as you can see on the top here, we have the topics. And that is just how it goes. So this is what the guide looks like and it goes up to the very last section here so this is week 18 and it ends on day 89 so you have 89 days scheduled out like that okay so now that you have a look inside the guide and sort of how it is laid out i have a few piles of books here to show you so you can see what the spines look like and what some of the additional resources look like that go along with this program. So the main spines of this are, we have DK Smithsonian's Geography. So that's kind of what that looks like in there. So just a encyclopedia. I have DK Eyewitness, Volcanoes and Earthquakes. DK Eyewitness Rocks and Minerals, DK Eyewitness Weather, 
I have the New York Public Library Incredible Earth. And then this one here is optional. It is only scheduled a few times in this guide, but I really love this book. I plan on using this thoroughly in my next guide and it is the Wondrous Workings of Planet Earth. So I would say you could take or leave this one, but I just think that it is just gorgeous. And so I do have a little bit of this scheduled in this guide. And then if you want to add in a Christian worldview, those were all secular resources. If you want to make sure that you include a Christian worldview, I have Exploring Planet Earth by John Hudson Tinner. Talked about him a lot on my channel. I really enjoy John Hudson Tinner's books. He writes in a very conversational style. It's very easy to understand what he's saying. He also writes some biographies, like scientist biographies. And so I really love his series, the Exploring Blank series. You'll also find Exploring the World of Astronomy by John Hudson Tinner in my astronomy unit. And then I have the weather book by Michael Ord and the geology book. So those are the spine books that I have scheduled throughout. Those are the basis of what you would need. And then I have some hands-on activities and experiments that are scheduled out. I schedule out a lot. I would say I personally would only do about one a week. We just kind of pick which ones we want to do. You can do as much or as little as you would like, but there's plenty to choose from. So I have Professor Figgy's Weather and Climate Science for Kids, Science Lab for Kids. I have Geology Lab for Kids. And I have the Amazing Earth Model Book. And so this is more paper models of different things as you're studying about the Earth. And then just to add a little more hands-on without having to look for resources and stuff like that, I have scheduled out the activities in this. So the Earth Science Kit by National Geographic. So I've gone through and scheduled out the different experiments they have in there. And also we have Science to the Max Weather Lab. If you look this up online, it will look a little bit different, but I believe it is exactly the same as this one here. So if you see, it looks a little different on the Amazon website that I link below, it is the same thing. So we have that scheduled out as well. So a bunch of weather kind of lab things. Now, before I get into all of the additional resources that I have scheduled out for you to use as well, I wanted to touch on two things that sort of give the student an opportunity to give some output. So I personally have found just some simple lab reports a free PDF on Teachers Pay Teachers. I edited it a bit, so this is not my work, it is someone else's. And so I would just suggest that you go find a simple lab sheet. They should have lots of free ones online. And what I do is I have my children pick one lab a week and they write down the hypothesis, materials, procedure, uh, draw a picture and do the results. So I just printed that off myself and made a little booklet for them. Next, in order to get some response from their readings, they can do this based on our spine books or on any of the additional books that they would like. I have them do a science notebook. So in the science notebook, basically I have a place for a drawing and then I have some space for writing. My daughter and I have created a bunch of these that we have on Amazon. So I will link a link to all of our science notebooks that we created. So if you're looking for something like this, it is 180 pages or 90 sheets. And so you could do one every day and would be perfect for one unit. So this is astronomy covers, but we do have some other covers available as well, but she just liked this one. So that's the one that my daughter is using for this course. But I will link this along with all the spines and as many of the additional resources that I show you here below if you would like to check any of the resources out. Okay, so I have a huge pile here. Do not be overwhelmed. You do not have to use all of these books. I got the majority of these from my library and that is what I'm planning on doing. When we get close to the time, I'm just going to check them out. So I didn't buy all of these books. The plan is just to check them out. And so I would say you could use similar books. You could try to find these books. You do not have to use all the books. As you could see from my guide, there are plenty of things scheduled. 
you definitely don't have to do everything to get a very full view of earth science using this guide. So just a few of sort of the novels or sort of more of the story type books. I have Giant of Faith in Science, Johann Kepler. This is a Christian resource. I will say the majority of everything else is not. That would be, most of them are secular, but this is by John Hudson Tinner. And I told you that I love his resources. So I have scheduled this out. I have The Big Wave by Pearl St. Buck, a very short, easy read, but just a fun little read. I have books like I Survived the Joplin Tornado, 2011. I have I Survived St. Helens, or uh, the St. Helens Eruption. I have Eye of the Storm. I have like a graphic novel, Journey to the Center of the Earth, or you can do a different version as well. And so I have both of those. I just don't have them on me right now. So I'm going to go through the rest of these really quickly. We have The Rock Cycle Crystals. We have Water Cycles by DK. This is a beautiful book. We have The Magic School Bus, Inside the Earth. We have Geofacts, River and Coast. We have Look at the Weather. What's the Weather? I often schedule out Seymour Simon books. So we have Rocks and Minerals by Seymour Simon. Another DK book, The Moon. Earth Shattering Events. So this is volcanoes, earthquakes, cyclones, tsunamis, and other natural disasters. The reason for the seasons. Let's investigate with Nate. Changes in the air. Carbon, climate, earth, and us. Coal is formed. Geofacts water cycle. Another Seymour Simon. Volcanoes. Glaciers are alive. Seymour Simon, Icebergs and Glaciers, Exploring, Weathering and Erosion, Fossil Hunter, How Mary Annie Changed the Science of Prehistoric Life, The Whirlwind World of Hurricanes with Max Axum. So this is just a fun graphic novel. I'm trying to do a variety of different types of books. So we have novels, we have chapter books, we have informational books, we have just a whole bunch of variety of different types of books. Look at sand, silt, and mud, and looking into soil. And so that is not everything that I have, but that is a large majority of the scheduled out books. I hope that gives you a good idea of the types of resources that are in this guide. If you are interested in this guide, I will link links to all the places that you can get this guide. There's a variety of options for you so you can purchase where you feel comfortable from. I will also link any coupon codes that I have below as well for you. So thank you so much for sticking with me so far. I hope this was interesting. If you know anyone who likes a literature based approach and wants more science units like this, please let them know. I'm just a homeschool mom who is just really passionate about teaching my kids using a literature based approach. And I just really wanted to create something for my own family that we would enjoy using. And I just wanna share it with all of you. So thanks so much for coming today and I hope to see you all in a future video. Bye everyone.